coming in. Hi everybody, it's uh, May Bank Holiday Weekend at the end of May, Saturday the 28th, and uh, 2011. I'm going to be out for two nights, so that's Saturday night and tomorrow Sunday night. So I'm going to be out for three days, so I just thought I'd show you how I kitted out the canoe. It was really heavy actually um, for this weekend. So I've got the inflatable pump that's in there, my shelter kit in there, in this rucksack, first aid kit, a few bits and pieces, torch, headlamp, um, catapult and in here I've got all my food and uh, four litres of water. What I decided to bring this time was a 10 litre collapsible container but I've actually brought some tap water from home because I could procure water if there's an emergency I've got my mill bank bag which I can fill this with water then boil it so I decided to bring enough water plus as well I want to have a, sh a wash a nice watery wash besides using the old um, cleansing wipes so I thought I'd bring that so of course that's about a good 20 pound in weight because that's just under 10 litres of water and then in this rucksack here that was very kindly given to me by my nephew who's uh, just retired from the paratroop regiment and this was one of his day sacks day bags so he gave that to me a couple of months ago so I'm using this today and in there is uh, my bed kit and my inflatable mat for sleeping and also a change of clothes um, so basically this was quite a load And also, as you can see, it's quite breezy. I think you can mostly hear the, air, the uh, wind. So all the romantic paddling on the rivers, you know, all nice and tranquil. It weren't like that getting in. There was crosswinds because the River Thames, where I've actually come along, it sort of meanders round for about a mile and a half which doesn't actually seem much when you're on foot but when you're paddling and there's a crosswind coming from northwest and it cuts across and it kicks the stern of the canoe and then it kicks the bow and you're moving backwards and forwards and basically if you could do I don't know 45 minute aerobics come circuit class without getting out of breath and you're fit enough to do that then <laughs> what I did to get here uh, this afternoon um, you'd be able to do but if you could anticipate getting out of breath and pe feeling pretty tired um, after doing even 15 20 minutes of I don't know sort of an exercise class the reason I say that is because I used to be a personal trainer and I used to teach those classes for about 15 years so um, luckily enough I was fit enough to do it otherwise the wind would have been blowing me backwards and forwards all over the place and being an inflatable Because the beam of the canoe, this is the beam here, is reasonably sort of like flat, not flat, but it's just slightly curved. So if you imagine, that's the hull of the inflatable canoe, but normally hard shells are a little bit more, um, what you might call convex, will actually protrude into the water more. So of course in a hard shell canoe, it's easier to track on the water. So where you paddle, the canoe's gonna go. But obviously with, a, with an inflatable, the manoeuvrability is a little bit different. Anyway, I'm going to crack on and um, as you can see I cleared some of the ground area and actually it was all overgrown just like this here all the nettles and you can just see what's actually started to sprout up since the last time I was here is uh, goose grass which is this sort of sticky stuff that sticks to your clothes but actually it's, it's edible so I might cook some of that tomorrow with my dinner but anyway I've cleared up some of this so I've got um, my space I might do a different setup of the tarp I'm not sure how I'm going to do it because if I'm expecting rain this evening I might want a bit more of a pitch on it and not have to actually get out of my um, from under the tarp to then readjust it so I might actually do it um, from the start and have some sort of fall or gradient on it so the water comes straight off so anyway I'm going to crack on as I said I'm going to get the old fire pit sorted and make some food and if there's still some daylight then uh, I might catch you a little bit later on the show. It's Sunday morning. Just use this um, multi-purpose buff as a skull cap during the night and 
as you can see it just shades the light as well if you pull it down just over the bridge of the nose because it gets about it gets daylight at about 4.30 in the morning so if you wake up and you know you still want to get a few more hours sleep and the daylight disturbs your, your sleeping then of course where are you? oh there you are uh, it just blocks out the light and just helps so as you can see it's uh, again still a bit breezy Luckily enough, where I've got my base camp, the breeze was actually blowing over the top, so it didn't actually come underneath the shelter. As such, I was okay. But uh, I slept in a different sleeping bag last night. Usual thing, just keeping the bottom bit zipped up, so it's like a hood over my boots. But you can see it's not my... Um, normally I take, uh, at this sort of time of year, when it's milder weather, I normally bring out my uh, two season tropical army sleeping bag but this time I brought one that I got a few years back it's a uh, pilot style it's got the drawstring hood but it's just that little bit thicker it's not much heavier it's not much heavier than um, the tropical army the green one but I like this one because it's sort of like a, a tone of black with a little bit of green on it so it's not a big bright colour but um, because they were predicting sort of a bit of a chill factor during the evening, maybe down to about five to seven degrees, I thought, well, I want a comfortable night's sleep. So I didn't mind bringing this. So um, just a little bit bulkier, but it's, it's really, really lightweight. But I just thought, right, I'll unzip it. Say, so, gosh, the dog was underneath it. But it was just about, had about twice the thickness. So I just had my T-shirt last night. That's all I had this um, day wear fleece and this kept me really warm really nice and comfortable and of course the obligatory softy trousers over my normal sort of cargo trousers so that was it so good night Kip uh, I'm going to do my normal camp routine freshen up with some wet wipes um, do some toast, do some breakfast, so you'd have seen that in the um, Wild Camp Walk and Talk on Island Number 2 not long ago. But once I've done that and I've got sorted ready for the day, I'll show you around my setup because I um, put a tarp, as you can just see out, outside the caches, over my fire pit because uh, there was a little bit of rain and I thought if during the night there was a heavy downpour, um, at least it will keep on the fire area if I'm going to use it again over the next day and a half. Nice and dry, so I'm just going to get sorted out, crack on, make something to eat, and then show you around the setup. Right, I'll just give you a brief show around of the configuration of the shelter tarp that I slept under. It speaks for itself, really. I mean, there's nothing technical about it. Two basher poles, extendable either end, the other one at the end. This one's and so I could have space here without any guy lines along here so obviously I've got space here and space here to get in and out from underneath the shelter I had this coming across here so that held that ridge pole and then the other end then my sleeping head end extendable basher pole with this one paracord straight down to the ground there two corners, this rear corner just bungeed round the tree and then also this one just bungeed down and the canoe supported on its edge obviously you want the hull underside upwards so of course the canoe don't fill up with water if there's a heavy downpour of rain and it just got it supported on an angle just on a bit of stick and then over onto this front corner I'll go into the whys and wherefores of this in a moment but originally this corner here sort of came more down at an angle and I sort of fastened it to the ground but then I decided I needed to have some sort of fixing point for the fire shelter which I'll go into as I say in a moment and then this uh, viewpoint side I just wanted this central point elevated just a little bit obviously it could come down I could have made it into a very low profile A shape 
um, you know, the, the wind had kicked up and it got really rainy. But I just wanted a viewpoint here because obviously main access is over there. So just so I can see what's going on from the riverbank, etc. Fold up stool. <laughs> That was a real boon last night, just sitting down rather than sitting on the ground. Sometimes if the ground's on a slant, you're sort of straining your back. So uh, that was nice and comfy. Sat on that making my breakfast this morning. And okay, just a stick that I beat back all the overgrown shrubbery. The uh, cover over the fire shelter, I really had to improvise on this. So there was no sort of super technical kit and wizardry going on. It was basically my fire pit needs to be protected from the rain so of course this is a simple economy poly tarp so it had to be high enough without obviously the flames melting it and there wasn't even any heat at it, on it at all last night so that was absolutely fantastic but I had to use what was around me basically so as you can see this corner was elevated up power corded then just looped over that small bit of branch and then taken into that hook which obviously raised this corner up a little bit from when it was originally down at an angle um, that was the only way that I could get a fall as you can see if there's any rain just going here then it would have just fallen down away from my workspace admittedly there's a gap between my sort of end entrance or of course side entrance to get into the fire shelter but it's only sort of two or three foot so if it had been heavy rain um, it wouldn't have made any difference and of course to the side of it where there was more cover space over the ground was where I stored all the wood there was enough space on this half for the fire to be protected up above and now <laughs> some dead branch that originated from over there sort of pulled it across made a little notch and sort of the leverage and the tautness of that eyelet kept it pulled over and the same on the other side as you can see on that little bit of twig that I had to just um, whittle down a little bit and then just protrude it through the eyelet so that kept these two end fastenings which kept it nice and secure and I'm shaking it about and it didn't even get like that with the wind last night so that was fine or broke this off from, from the dying off fallen branches although it is actually green so it's nice and strong whittled that down a bit poked it through the hole two small bits of paracord joined them together and fastened right down there where my foot is there so the guy line takes it up keeps the rigidity here so as I pull this as you can see it keeps it secure so that was the fire shelter Right, I'll take you into my lounge come kitchen. <laughs> Sit on the old tripod and uh, show you the food that I brought. Right, it's in here. Tomato ketchup, some oil if I need it. A magic con concoction of about 10 different types of spices pepper, salt, cayenne pepper, ginger, nutmeg, all mixed up. A bit of chocolate, some butter, knife, spoon, fold up knife dog food, biscuits with powdered milk in a bag in there as well, tea bags and sugar. Right this is one meal, a tin of sweet corn, new potatoes which I'm just going to cut the uh, marks off and slice, uh, cut those into small pieces to go with this lamb hot pot. So this is all one meal, this isn't enough for me anyway. So I've got that, I've got added vegetables, potatoes that I'll boil up. Stick the sweet corn, so that's one meal. I've got another meal, instant noodles, chicken flavour. And there's uh, a microwavable, but of course it's a long life, it's about 18 months life on this. Uh, but it's a microwavable, Moroccan inspired, inspired is the magic word, chicken soup. But I want to sort of carb it up a little bit hence the noodles, so I'll just boil those up, only take a couple of minutes, add that to it, so that's another main meal. I've got a bannock mix here, a little bit different from the other one when I did the uh, drop scone video, but this one's got the same sort of mixture of um, plain flour, a cup of plain flour, a cup of, sorry, half a cup of powdered milk, um, a quarter of a cup of sugar because I wanted it sweet, a teaspoon of baking powder, 
and also half a cup of ground almonds. So this is going to be sort of an almond flavour bannock, which I, I can eat on its own with some tinned fruit, tinned mandarins, easy pull ring top so I don't need a tin opener so that can go with that and also I've got some tin bristling which is like a sardine come small mackerel which is in tomato sauce already cooked so I can also have that with some leftover bannock all right so it's almond but you know you can mix almond with anything last night on the fire I cooked um, jacket potatoes in some foil and the pork steak which was seasoned so that was really nice but I didn't eat that till late till it was dark so it was just nice to sit on this tripod stool and uh, put it on my lap and just eat and my dog thinks I'm saying to her no not you I don't want to eat you on my lap right so I'll just take you into the other bit of me sort of bathroom part I don't wake up move move good girl um, some deep impregnated mosquito and insect repellent wipes I use those now and then because obviously I've got no hair so of course the uh, old midges and everything are attracted to my head the um, wet wipes plain anti-allergy really sort of good basic ones with a sort of a, um, a light soap mixture in them my wash bag which in there has got toothbrush a flannel and also some liquid soap so tomorrow I must really actually have a wash out the bowl with my collapsible bowl kitchen roll and then water, which I drunk straight out of there, there, and here. There's two litres left in there. Apple juice. I bought myself a new Millbank bag, which, as you're much fully aware, you just soak this in the water, get a container, fill the bag up with water, let it hang, and it filters down to that point there. And then you can boil it. So it's uh, the fibre of the material. It might take a while. It's about one and a half to two litres it will do so I've got that there for emergencies because as I showed you at the beginning I didn't want to procure water over the weekend so hence brought about eight litres of water in this collapsible bottle which is going to be cooking water it's straight out the tap but because it's in the plastic container um, it won't get contaminated but I've just kept my direct drinking water that I would drink straight away in those bottles which was like four litres plus I got the apple juice and then I use the water that's in the collapsible bag for making tea, boiling it up and of course anything that I need to cook in water will be in that water. Okay, I've paddled um, about three or four miles from where I'm camped up on the island and I'm going sort of uh, upstream along the Thames and I'm now coming up what's called Kennerton backwater and this here is an island that goes all the way round sort of here the Thames is the other side the main stretch of the Thames is the other side of this island which is about all oh, about nearly a mile long by about a quarter of a mile wide and there's some open ground here and on the other side of those trees is the main road that leads up to Henley which is up that direction Okay, I've come a bit further up the backwater and you can see in the middle of the island there, you can see where it stretches, that sort of clump of trees right over there. That's how sort of wide it is, a little bit further where those covered bales are. But right in the distance on the other side of that field. So there's like some sheared sheep grazing in the field. And on the other side where the main terra firma is, obviously with some lands being excavated to um, develop some houses. Further down there is some nice big houses but I wouldn't film them just out of respect and privacy for people's homes so um, I'm going to go a little bit further up there where it's a little bit more rural this is great big riverside gardens and in 
the island, a mixture of cows. I should go out for a little paddle on a Sunday afternoon. Okay, this is the northern end of the Henneton backwater and the main stretch of the Thames is over there. Here's the end of the island. Okay, I've come up as far as I'm going to go. This is the uh, lock, just straight over there. And about another mile and a quarter, the other side of that lock is Henley. Um, Henley town, which is sort of quite a nice town with pubs and that overlooking the river. Lots of what you call gongoozlers, which are people that just sit by the riverside watching people on the water, either swimming, paddling or um, sailing their cruiser boats. But I've now got to go upstream. Hello, Ducky. Oh. <laughs> Say hello and they wave their tail. So I've paddled a bit further down, about another sort of three quarters of a mile. There's an island right there, so where that barge is going. That houseboat on the right, I can go down that way, or else I can go over that side. I think I'll actually uh, stick to the Riverways Highway code and stay to the right. Okay, I came down the right side of this island and I've actually, uh, as you can see, moored up. And, um, ew, what's been going on here? Pallet. Rotten log. Another bit of sort of fence income pallet, whatever it is. Broken wood. So just doing a bit of a recce on this little island. Here's the Thames now the other side. Over this side here. I'll just follow the dog, she knows where to go. Considering we've never been on here before. So here's the other side of the Thames. Freezy. Still very uh, cool but I've decided actually to stop here. Nice little padded bench. Nice and warm insulation, bit of moss. And uh, got my kit bag. So I've got my cooker in there, sort of waterproofs and whatever, just in case. But I've got my um, one-man stove in there. Palm and one-man stove, some water, I've got the noodles, got the soup. So I'm gonna knock that up now, make something to eat. So I've got some calories for the journey home.